Hi! How is music listening and our understanding of music influenced by how we move? In this video we're going to discuss music, movement, verticality and bodily metaphors. Music often ascends. It seems to move upwards. Passages build upon each other. Moving upwards towards a climax. They are being lifted up and then let down again. How is our experience of music informed by our human knowledge of movement? We have bodies with directions, up and down, bodies that can move vertically, slowly or fast, with undulating movements or longer one directional movements. And we also understand music to go up and down in slow movements or faster, pulsating, repetitive or long ascending or descending melodic lines or pitch movements. Some musicians also move up and down when they play, according to melodic contours, how the melody moves in directions. So, what's the connection? Music, as it behaves acoustically, from an instrument or a speaker, does not actually have a vertical dimension. Sound makes pressure waves in the air, which makes our eardrum vibrate. So the verticality must be part of our interpretation, or experienced, based upon our understanding. But how is our understanding of such relations in music shaped? To investigate this we will look at the metaphor theory of linguist George Lakoff and philosopher Mark Johnson. In their book Metaphors We Live By, they discuss basic metaphors. Metaphors we use all the time in our daily life. We are falling asleep, I can see the answer now, I'm falling behind at school, I'm on the top of the problem now. And they believe that we learn to make sense of such metaphors on the basis of bodily experiences, of movement, of bodily states. Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel offers a warm welcome to the Chinese state councillor. How is warm here understood as a caring, considerate welcome? Lakoff and Johnson suggest that children at an early age experience warmth together with caring, in connection with being held close, feeling the warmth of, for example, the mother's body. And expressions like being a warm person or a close person is immediately understood on the basis of the bodily experience of warmth and closeness mixed together with loving care. Similarly, we may learn the notion of up as good and down as bad as early experiences of caring persons being above us and the act of being lifted up as something positive while being laid down again on the floor or in the bed as something negative. In the Middle Ages, up was where heaven was situated, while down below was hell. Up and down is used extensively as metaphors for being positive and negative. Like Van Johnson presents many examples. He's in top shape, I came down with the flu, Lazarus rose from the dead, he dropped dead, wake up, he sank into coma, it's a high number, her income fell last year, I'm feeling up, he fell into a depression, she's at the peak of her career, he's at the bottom of the social hierarchy. Lakoff and Johnson believe that spatial orientations arise from the fact that we have bodies of the sort we have and that they function as they do in our physical environment. Our key question here is to what extent our understanding of up and down in music is established in the similar manner as the understanding of linguistic terms that Lakoff and Johnson discusses. We are very early in life exposed to sounds and movements and the most compelling will be when actual directions are linked with music or musical sounds, for example, if you're making accompanying sounds while lifting your child up and down. Or singing songs that follow vertical up and down movements. Visual inputs can also be important, like cartoons. Mickey Mousing is often used as a term to describe direct connection between directions and musical sounds. Notation goes up and down, watching musicians move can have an impact, but in line with the metaphor theory, personal bodily experiences will matter more. Dancing, singing, playing instruments, and some instruments are more in line with up and down directions than others. A piano, for example, has a horizontal outline, while an organ usually has the lowest register on foot pedals below. We are, of course, formed individually, and there are also large cultural differences but there might be certain universal experiences that make the notion of up and down in music natural to humans. When the music is loud, we all feel the bass in the trunk, 
down here, since that is the area in the human body where we don't have too many bones, and the low frequencies of the bass sound produce the largest vibration. Similarly, we may try to open our larynx to produce high notes, if you're not professional singers. La la la! Then we might do this by lifting upwards, high is up, and low is down. To see musical elements as metaphors for movement can reveal a better understanding of other elements too. The dynamics of the sound often have the same connections to up and down as verticality. Low in volume is stone, while louder is up. Tempo in music, fast or slow, may relate to the tempo of bodily movements. How a sound is played gently or hard may relate to the power of intensity of human movements. The balance of a musical passage may relate to our human understanding of corporal balance. On the dance floor, it is easy to see such connections. The DJ provides the material for the dancers to use their bodies as an instrument for acting out the metaphoric in relations in the music. The tempo, the verticality, the dynamics, the intensity. But all music can be understood on the basis of musical metaphors and serve as the provider of material for human movement. You just have to try. <laughs>